Joe Darwin's hamster has requested that people upload what their ideas of the scientific method is and to describe something that science has uh, been applied to and this and has helped us figure out something about the universe. He also says he's laid a little trap for us and I'm curious to see what that is. Nevertheless, I thought this would be a good time to try on my new persona. I've always wanted to be Mr. Wizard, so I will be the cool Mr. Wizard. Today, uh, electrostatic machines. Yeah, so you can make electricity with no coils, with barely, hardly anything, just a few pieces of metal. The scientific method. Without looking it up, I'm going to say the scientific method is making an observation, having a hypothesis that describes the observation, and then uh, conducting falsifiable tests to verify the hypothesis. So, let's apply that. We can readily observe sparks, and I can certainly feel the sparks. Every once in a while I'll switch to poles. But there we go. So, what is the hypothesis? Now, certainly when I built this machine, I didn't know how it worked, so I had to go through the scientific method of how this machine uh, would operate. I mean, what? there's hardly anything. It doesn't even seem like it would do anything. And certainly, I mean, if you built it backwards and you did this, absolutely nothing. Uh, so there must be something to do with the way the disc spins and these little pieces of metal fairly easily makes, uh, as you can hear it, quite a lot of electricity. So, how does it work? Well, my hypothesis is we will say that one of these two sides is more positively charged than the other, and the other side has more electrons. So we will, just for argument's sake, say this side has three volts more than this side. Or this side has three, this side has negative three. Uh, it doesn't matter. This side could have zero, and this side could have negative six. It really doesn't matter what the reference is. But, since this side has uh, more negative charge, has more electrons, when one of these metal plates comes across, it touches a small piece of conductive tape, and as it rotates it, it touches the neutralizer. Since it's connected underneath here, the electrons will be attracted to the other side. Since it's trying to get to the positive side, and this is the negative electrons, since so negative uh, opposites attract. If this is 3 volts, then under here will be negative 3 volts. Since this is negative 3, um, this, of course, when this came around, would be positive 3. So we have negative 3 volts on this plate and... Uh, we have positive 3 over here. But as they come around, the charge will be added, the negative charge, will be added to this side. And the positive charge will be added to this side. So now we have negative 6 and positive 6. And as it goes around, we will have, it'll do it again, and then we will have negative 12 and positive 12. And 24 and 24. And it'll keep doubling. Or essentially doubling. So, my hypothesis, uh, I mean, the test would be that the electricity won't simply add. You won't simply just generate it, and you have to wait a proportional amount of time. It will be exponential. So very quickly, we can observe that we have lots of voltage uh, very quick. Now, I don't have a hypothesis yet of why every once in a while electricity will die down if I can get it to do. And um, then it swap, swaps directions. I can tell that it swaps directions by the nature of the sparks. And it just swapped back again. I have no hypothesis for that. I'm not sure. I, I'd have to build more machines, I suppose, and conduct more experiments. But yes, the, the scientific method. Uh, at least I believe that's how it works. I'm going to have to conduct more experiments to uh, verify my hypothesis more. Let's see, what else can we apply the scientific method to? Hmm. Uh, 
I observe that heavy objects can fly. I observe that pink objects can fly. Therefore, pink elephants can fly. My test would be to search for pink elephants that cannot fly. When I find one, I, my hypothesis hypothesis will be invalidated. Uh, it's a lot easier to apply science to uh, something like this, but it's all logic and of course I made a, uh, my, my hypothesis is, is invalid. It's, it's an invalid argument. But nevertheless, science can be, if the hypothesis is invalid and irrelevant to the uh, observations, then uh, it's not good science. So as the final Final trick, let me turn off the lights. And as a favorite for everybody, yes, there it goes. All right. As you can tell from my videos, I love electricity. All right. Oh, there's some nice ones. I, if I can find the link to building this device, I will put it up. It's it's fairly easy to build; doesn't really require much. It's incredibly hard to debug. Uh, trying to get this thing to work, though. If it doesn't work, then you're pretty much out of luck. Where's Park? And as far as this one, when I said that one side has to have more charge than the other, if it doesn't start, sometimes I'll take a balloon, get some static electricity, and then just apply it to one side. And then, of course, if you apply enough, it'll start it up. There are some motors you can make with this. Uh, it's pretty fascinating. As long as you don't put a capacitor, it's fairly harmless. Uh, you don't have a chance to really getting hurt. That's certainly lots of fun to just wonder, how in the world does that thing work? <laughs>